All right, uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. <clears throat> I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world calls Christ, Yahweh Shine. It's your brother, our chief priest, Allah, the lawyer, <clears throat> aka the little Hebrew. Coming to the class this morning. So I'm still out here in New York. I'm in Brooklyn, Shalom. What's up to the Shatar side? Shatar Nakawam, Shalom, Yahweh Shemir, Shalom, Katham. Still out here in Brooklyn, good old BK. Uh, I can't because I'm, I'm on the phone line. You can't add nobody off the phone. Oh, Shalom to the War Dogs of Har. Yeah, quiet, my God. Shalom, my God. Um, but yeah, so still out here in New York, Brooklyn. Leave uh, today, later on today. Who's spreading power to y'all about Shamel Um, Lord willing. Took me a little nap earlier. Got up with uh, some scriptures on my mind through the spirit. Uh, a concept on my mind in the spirit. <clears throat> so I wanted to uh, go into something. All praises, man. Levi just doing what he's supposed to do, man. Jesus, Jacob, thy law. Right? So we have nothing to glory in, right? You just get these shares out through the spirit, and we get started. Praise you about some else I like. So yeah, man, I got a um a lesson I want to go into, and, it, and it's dealing with the judgment of the Most High. Um, dealing with the judgment of the Most High. Y'all can hear me good. <clears throat> Aside, my voice is kind of like. Good. All right, all praises. All right, so look, um, I know a soldier. I think there's one more soldier left in here, but I think he's he's probably knocked out, you know. But uh, so I just, you know, I don't want to bother. Brother got a flag. We all got, you know, some more traveling to do with the spirit. But yeah, so um, yeah, I want to do with this lesson on judgment. You know, we have a brother who, two brothers that I can't actually is going through something and, and maybe that's why this is on the spirit but yeah make sure I like up share and all that but i think possibly this is why the spirit put this on me this lesson um but yeah we we we, we it, it could be i don't know because it, it's kind of related but not totally but kind of related um but what i want to say is you know we first and foremost we have our two brothers in our Seattle camp, brothers out the tribe of Issachar, brother uh, Mabakar and brother Kapar, their brothers, actual brothers, um, by the grace of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh they came into the troop together. And they joined our Seattle uh, camp. Uh, they, something very tragic happened to their family, doing with their mother and their sisters. They lost their mother, and their sisters are still in the hospital, one in extremely critical condition. You know, life support. Um, if anybody's interested in supporting, they have a GoFundMe right now. So if y'all go to my Facebook page, Gorilla Hebrew, uh, Facebook.com backslash Gorilla Hebrew, or Alazar Maloya, scroll down, you see the GoFundMe link. Share it if it's on your spirit, give a donation. Um, you know, a lot of times we, our people, we, we don't know about having insurance. We don't know about these various things. So a lot of times we don't have them. So we have to, you know, fundraise the old fashioned way, be it car washes, asking for donations, things of that nature. You know, when 
serious medical expenses, funeral expenses, things of that happen. So, you know, that fundraising. So if, if you'd like to support, please, you know, if you were in a super chat or whatever today, you can go right up over there and just go ahead and give it to the Akim um, so they could, you know, take care of the situation with, you know, their mother and their sisters and all that. Right, but I think maybe that in part, in the spirit inspired this lesson possibly because it's partially related, right? But the lesson I want to go into today is dealing with the judgment of Yahweh, the judgment of the Most High Yahweh, right? Um, because in Israel, <clears throat> Israel sometimes has a problem with being too judgmental, all right? We have the right, and we understand the law, and we judge things. We have the right to judge. I'm not saying that we can't judge. But you have Israel that is at times overly judgmental. I want to look up this word and make sure I'm using it right. Judgmental. This is the... This is the definition that I like to employ in this instance and it's having or displaying an excessively critical point of view sometimes brothers have an excessively critical point of view like who y'all remember when uh, Megan Good had posted something on her Instagram I'm up early I, I, I took it now who remember when Megan Good had posted something about Israel on her Instagram? She was seen frequenting things with the brother Brandon T. Jackson. Who remember that? Okay, the God, I don't want to remember. All praises, he was on the scene. Stephen said, looked like he remembered. Who remember that? She posted something about Israel. Then she made a post where she had like blonde dreads. Like blonde faux locks in her hair. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all may be newer in Israel or, you know, wasn't heavy into the scene during that time. That was probably, what, like two, possibly three years ago? It was like right after Brandon T. Jackson had went public with being in Israel. So it was probably like around three years ago. You know, Shabbat Shalom to my, make sure I say Shabbat Shalom to my Lunar Sabbath keepers, like myself. Hey, nobody else remember the chat died out. What's up, man? No, nobody else remember. All right, well, I'll move on. Well, Megan Good had been hanging around Brandon T. Jackson. Y'all don't know Megan Good's husband is like a, uh, like a pastor. And I guess the brother Brandon T. Jackson had been teaching him about Israel. So I believe she made a post about it. And then she posted a picture where she had like blonde faux locks. Megan Good I'm talking about. And you had Israelites tearing her ass up on a comment board. And and the sister Megan Good. And y'all got to risk Megan Good. Like, you know, we don't respect persons by any means. Understand that. But here's the book. You know, this Megan Good, man. Um, That's like our homegirl. Whether you know it or not, we remember her from Friday. We remember her from Cousin Skeeter. We remember her from Biker Boys. We remember her from Ways Deep. You see what I'm saying? Like we, it, that's making good. Like we grew up with making good, right? Um, but what happens is, niggas start tearing her ass up for having a blonde faux locks, and she gets on there in humility, and res responds to brothers like, "Damn, like I didn't know. Like I'm just learning about this." And sometimes we can be too judgmental to where somebody knows there's an Israelite and then we're holding them to all the standards of what it is to understand what we're supposed to do as being Israelites. Over-righteous. Sometimes people don't, you know, we all go through a transition where we don't, yeah, type in making good and Israelites on Google image, you'll find it. Okay, let me see real quick. Let
This one. Matter of fact, here's a better one. See, look, she got the blind full locks in, right? Like Ayatha said, you got, people got to start off in, in, in certain places. Where is this? What is this? Megan No Good reply. Look at the title of this video. I don't need, I need this focus to get right on. See that? Megan No Good replies to the Hebrew Israelites, right? Mind you, this is after a damn one day of posting something about being an Israelite. Here's the picture. You see this? So the brother's trying to introduce them to this paradigm and the next day we're holding her to all the standards of the law and that's not even scriptural when you deal with Paul and when you deal in the New Testament you're dealing with three stages or three levels of growth you're dealing with Gentile you deal with proselyte then you deal with Jew or Israelite Understanding these three stages. Gentile is a brother or sister in the world. They call themselves black, African American, West Indian, Haitian, Mexican, Puerto Rican, etc. Gentile, right? Then you have proselyte. You find out you're an Israelite and you're in the transitional stages, either the early or late transitional stages. Then you become a full fledged Jew. Once you become a full fledged Jew or an Israelite, even though you're already a, a, a full-fledged Jew or Israelite according to birthright, but according to your spiritual metamorphosis, when you graduate to your full-fledged in the thought of an Israelite again and functioning as an Israelite again, then you are held to all the standards of law. Remember when they were mass converting brothers who were coming from a Gentile state of mind in the New Testament, they gave fundamental laws that they had to keep, right? Not eat, eating things strangled and sacrificed to idols and things of that nature. That's how they. That, those were the entry level instructions that they were getting during that time period. Uh -huh. You know, some people come to truth and they had a last Thanksgiving, they had a last birthday, etc. I know a lot of people have done it. I'm not gonna even judge that. But once you fully are off the porch, you stay off the porch, so to speak. You stay an Israelite, you don't backslide. That, that's what's expected of you. And I see people being brought under the microscope after they have made that full transition, but early in that walk, that can be very disheartening um, to do. And I, I believe it was in the case of that, and you know it is what it is, because the elect period, if you're of the elect, you're gonna get this and you're gonna stay steadfast regardless, but we have to be careful being overly judgmental okay i'm sure that turned her off to the community entirely and israel have a habit of doing that just attack 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 too damn much and being overly judgmental and not balanced at all when the scriptures speak about balance not factoring in the nuance and the curve that we are graded on you see what i'm saying and it, and, and that's dealing with judgment period you can see somebody get hit by a car, all oh, that judgment, who cares? Am I disagreeing that it's not? Am I disagreeing that it is the judgment of the Lord? Of course not. I understand Yahweh, the Most High, being the Supreme Being, eminently reigning in the kingdom of men, and having the supreme, eminent domain to decide each and every single thing that happens. And has predetermined and predestined every single thing to happen that has happened and that will happen. I don't disagree with any of that, right? But what I disagree with is the stance that brothers take sometimes in regards to it, and I'm going to go into scripture through the spirit of poverty, how about some of y'all to substantiate this, right? So first thing I'm gonna go to is the book of Job. This is Job <clears throat> four and seven, it reads, remember I pray thee, Whoever perished being innocent or where were the righteous cut off? Brothers love this scripture. I love this scripture. I, I love going to the scripture. Where were the righteous cut off? So we understand that it's Yahweh's judgment is at work. We get that totally, right? I got a precept here. Let me take a look at it. 
before I move on. Proverbs 26 and 2. Um, Proverbs 26 and 2. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so so the curse causeless shall not come. Beautiful priest of all praise. How about some So the curse does not come causeless, right? A be a baby shower is not a pagan holiday. Uh, Abraham had a baby shower for Isaac, right? Let me show you. Pagan holidays would be birthdays, Christmas, Easter, um, Thanksgiving, New Year's uh, Eve, New Year's Day, Valentine's Day. Um, th those are pagan holidays. All right, those are holidays that we can trace the roots of them into idolatry, paganism, or the commemoration of an atrocity that occurred to our people. Those things are pagan holidays. A baby shower is not a pagan. Holiday. Okay, so let's let's get Genesis 21. All right, get you get your free things for your child. Save yourself some money. Don't let these nuts deter you from that. Genesis 21 and 18, and it reads. No, no, not 21 and 18. So like here. 21 and 8. My fault. Right. So it says, and the child grew, and was weaned. Right. So when the child came off the breast. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned, right? So, in ancient times, what happened? You didn't have a ultrasound that could let you know before you birthed the child. Of course, Easter is a pagan holiday. Let you know before you birthed the child what the gender of the child would be. So, typically, you would wait until after the weaning of the child, meaning after it was done at the breast, to have this baby shower, all right? So... That's what it would be. You had that feast for the child. Okay? So, um, yeah, like you said, the baby shower just helps with expenses. Helps with expenses. Um, but, yeah, so just going back to it, we understand that the curse does not come causeless. There's a cause. Yahweh has a cause for all the things that he does. Whether they are apparent to us immediately retrospectively or not at all he has a cause he has a purpose he does what he has to do and like we like to say all things like a brother my brother a tot like to say all things work for the greater good for all praise to the most high but what we have to understand is our role in our position sometimes brothers use these scriptures as an excuse to be callous and to be indifferent about tragedy and about things that happen to people and that's off Right, and that's really the point of this lesson. And I want to go into some precepts to further prove that. Now I'm gonna to go to the gospel, according to John, according to Saint John, the ninth chapter. Ooh. All right, so John nine. One to two and it reads, and as Yahweh Shai passed by, he saw a man which was blind from birth, from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Such a powerful, powerful scripture. Again, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The first thing that it tells us is that we clearly believe in reincarnation or regeneration because they're asking about a man, making inquisition about a man blind from birth and asking if the cause of his blindness was what? His sin. Blindness is something that develops in the embryonic stages, in the womb. Right? So when did he sin? It would have to have been in the previous lifetime because he wasn't even out of the womb to start sinning yet. That proves that. But he's asking, is this a judgment on that particular brother, or is it a judgment on his parents? 
They're understanding that his blindness is a judgment again. Let's read this in Proverbs, which is powerful. I'm sorry, I'm glad I had that written down next to Job 4 and 7. And that, that's something just a tip. Go to the more commonly and easily remembered or, or, or the precepts that are really etched in your head and write down the colder, less known precepts next to them. So you'll turn to it, see that, and sometimes you go to that other one. Because people have heard, there's nothing wrong with repeating the same precepts, but you know it's good also to go to other ones that correspond with it. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. But again, Proverbs 26 and 2, and it reads, As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Again, so the curse causeless shall not come. So when the curse comes, there's a cause why the curse comes. From Yahweh. Again, it may not be immediately apparent, it may be retrospectively apparent, or it may never be apparent. But for whatever reason, there is a cause to reason Yahweh sent the curse. We understand that. So the the disciples are asking, well, why is he blind? But let's go to the Torah real quick. Let's go to the law in the book of Leviticus. Well, he's blind. He's blind because the curse came upon him as a judgment for a sin either by himself or his parents, their sin, right? Now, in that instance, there was another cause, but in typical instances, through their inquisition, it shows that this is usually the cause for as to why somebody is like that. It's not always the cause. It's not always the cause. We see that there, because that man literally had blindness, and was blind from birth, just so Yahweh Shah could heal his blindness and show his power. So it had nothing to do with something he did or something his parents did. But the typical thing is, the usual thing, Again, not 100% of the time, and I'm not going to speak as emphatically like I can say which time is what. That's for you, Howard, to judge. But in a lot of instances, the reason why people have certain things happen to them or are born with disabilities, etc., are what? Because of a curse or a judgment, because of sin, right? But with that even being said, what does Yahweh instruct us to do in regards to these people? Leviticus 19 and 14 and it says thou shalt not thou shalt not thou shalt not curse the deaf nor put a stumbling block before the blind but thou shalt fear thy power I am your house so look at that you you can't put a stumbling block before the blind but if we follow some of these brothers logic they'll go well well, the blind man is cursed, so the most high don't care about him. He cursed him with that blindness. So the hell with him. That's a judgment on him. Yes, it is a judgment on him, but guess what? You still can't put a stumbling block before him. You still have to treat this person in a very specific way. So yes, Yahweh judged him, but that's not for you to further that. Yahweh is dealing with him in that regard. It's not for you to um, just not care about the fact that this individual has been plagued with this because what's stopping you from me what's stopping Yahweh from plaguing you with that are you going to be talking about it's just a judgment then nine times out of ten no like the brother Shalem said don't further the affliction but sometimes we can just be so callous and hard oh I don't care this person got put to death or I don't care and just be indifferent to it the judgment of the Lord you right it is a judgment I don't disagree but that doesn't mean that we should be callous as Hebrew Israelites towards everything that happens. God, let me tell you something. When that earthquake hit Haiti, I seen that damn video. Nigga, I was crying. And guess what? I understood it was the judgment of Yahweh. I understood emphatically. When that earthquake hit, I wasn't going, why? It's very clear why that earthquake hit the way it hit. It decimated us the way it did it. The judgment of Yahweh came upon us the way it did. It was very clear and apparent. And Yahweh made it clear and apparent by making sure to leave as many Caesar Bolger statues standing as he could, but destroying the buildings and the houses that were behind them to show us an example of this is why that judgment was coming. The guy, like the guy, I said, Moses pled for the nation. Right? All praises, brother. Take it easy, man. Get edified on the clock, God. Right. I understood why that judgment came to Haiti fully. I was probably a year and a half in the truth by that time. So I understood fully why that judgment came on Haiti, but I still cried about it. I still felt sorry for it. I still was trying to get into the Red Cross to go and be a part of the 
a relief work. Why? Because it's still a tragedy. And when tragedy strike, even if it's a judgment or not, people still need help. And it's on us to do it. See what I'm saying? So, but Israel, man, Israel's crazy. Let me get this precept. In the Apocrypha. Let's go to the book of 2nd Ezra. Shalom, Azakwam, Matapu. We got to help our people. Israel just look at everything was a judgment, so we ain't got to help. No, you still got to help. The same way you can't put a stumbling block before a blind man. You still got to help. But Israel just have a hate spirit. Hate, hate, hate. I hate every Israelite. I'm just overly judgmental. Nobody want to work with brothers. See what I'm saying? It's just an evil spirit. But let me get this. Second Ezra 5 and 42. And it says, And he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring, like as there is no slackness of the last, even so there is no swiftness of the first. Let me understand you. How is judgment is going to come? Guaranteed. We don't argue with the judgment of Yahweh. We understand the judgment of Yahweh. But we still have to be there for one. If we know a brother was messing up and the most I had to where he just totally homeless, does that mean, oh, hey, listen, brother, that's my judgment of the Lord. You can't come stay in my house. Nah, man. You don't operate like that. And Israel be acting like that in that spirit. They heavy off into that spirit. Um, which yeah, so where was I at? But I want to go right here, and I'm gonna further go into this. We went to the prophet Jeremiah. Yeah, well, yeah, Matatwa, you're right. A lot of us used to be more loving before we came into the truth, and some of us lost that, and, and we're not understanding that that's a part of the issue. We're supposed to be compassionate amongst our people. We're supposed to love our people. You see what I'm saying? We're supposed to be courteous. You see what I'm saying? Like th That's really what the scriptures is talking about. But we just being damn cut, cut, cut mode all the time. Not realizing there's another side to this. There's a balance to this. There is that and that is necessary. But we got to balance it out more. And I'm going to show you with the example with the prophet Jeremiah, man. Jeremiah is a prime beautiful. That's why they call him the weeping prophet. Right? How many people know they call him the weeping prophet? There, there are Israelites in Africa. There are Israelites in Africa. Y'all look out for this new video I did with Sanetta in um, Garfield. Look for that video coming out real soon. Alright? Some dogmatic brothers that stuck in an old mindset is going to be upset at that video. But brothers who are in the spirit, progressively growing and understanding the evolution of this truth... And this truth spreading throughout the four corners of the earth like the Bible says it's going to, it's going to love that video. All right? And it's going to arm brothers through the spirit and power. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, prepare brothers for some of these questions, either whether they come from apologists, whether they come from dudes who are um, just anybody trying to deny the Bible, things of that nature. You're going to see how to deal with certain things. People trying to come against the 12 tribe, you're going to see how to deal with certain things. People trying to come with DNA, you're going to see how to deal with certain things in the spirit. Alright, so look for that video. But Jeremiah 9 is what I'm going to go to. I'm going to be honest, I'm going to read this whole chapter. I'm going to key in on a few specific parts, but I'm going to go into this whole chapter because it's beautiful through the Spirit and it, and it really proves my point and shows you the balance of it. 
in Jeremiah 9, it's starting at verse 1, and it says, Oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes fountains of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. So here we are, the prophet Jeremiah, and what he, what, what is he saying? I'm, I, I'm crying my eyes out day and night. Why? For the dead Israelites. He's crying about it. But, verse 2, Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they are all adulterers as an assembly of treacherous men. So in one verse, he's telling you, I'm crying. He's crying compassionately for what is happening to his people. But in the next verse, he proceeds to rebuke. And that's showing you the beautiful balance. I'm sad to see my people in this position. I'm sad to see my people bugged out of their mind on drugs. I'm sad to see them dropping like flies. I'm sad to see it. But I'm still going to rebuke them because the Most High told us to. And the reason why we're in this position is because we're being wicked. So we need to be rebuked and told to stop doing our wickedness so we can be brought out of this. That doesn't mean we shouldn't still be sad that we're full of the fury and judgment of Yahweh. See what I'm saying? There's the balance. Jeremiah, one verse, I'm crying for y'all, but another verse, y'all are wicked. I want to get the hell away from you. Right? No, when it say there was head as waters, you're talking about him crying. Verse 3. And they bend their tongue like they're both for lies. But they are not valiant for the truth. That's how people, they quit the lie, they're not valiant for the truth. So he's rebuking. He's crying for Israel, but he's also rebuking Israel. Right? And that's the balance. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil. Our people just, they go from one evil to another. All they care about is evil. And they know they know not me, saith Yahweh. So he's crying. But he's still rebuking according to the word of the Lord. That's how he's supposed to be. Compassionate, but still rebuked. Yeah, I wish I was like that. Compassionate, but still rebuked. Verse 4. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slander. That's a lot of our people. It's the majority of our people. People tightening in close circles, homies backstabbing each other, etc. Right? And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. A lot of Negroes and Hispanics' first instinct is to lie. They hold life is a lie. Right? They have taught their tongue to speak lies and they weary themselves to commit iniquity. They go out of their way to sin. Right? Thine habitations is in the midst of deceit. Though that though of uh, so like through deceit they refuse to know me, save Yahweh. That's how our people are rejecting Yahweh, because they love lies. They love falsehood. Right? Therefore, thus save Yahweh of hosts, or Yahweh Tazabah. Behold, I will melt them. Right? Mosai is destroying us. This is why he's destroying us. Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? He said he's going to melt us and try it. The righteous are going to come as what? Gold. When that fire comes. Everyone else is going to melt and be evaporated. That's the two thirds. Right? Their tongue is an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth. But in his heart he layeth his weight. So you have niggas. Oh no, nah, it's cool. It's all good. But they plotting on how to rob you. How to kill you. How to get over on you. How to get with your woman. This is the day-to-day -day life that blacks and Hispanics unfortunately have to live. And this is how we know we're the people of God. Period. Plenty of prophecies for these days. Shall I not visit them for these things? So the Lord, like the brother said, grudges. But we get visited for this. And these are the curses and the, the, the negative things that happen to us as a people. Individually and collectively. Shalom on uh, us your thought has about newly raised your thought has about he's visiting us for this right shall I not visit them for these things say if you shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation of this 
And that's why this is happening to us. Right? For the mountains will I take up a weeping and wailing, and for habitations of the wilderness a lamentation, because they are burnt up, so that none can pass through them, neither can men hear the voice of the cattle, both the fowl of the heavens and the beasts of the field, they are gone. Right? That's the type of destruction that came upon them. And I will make Jerusalem a heap and a den of dragons, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. This is going to the time we went into Babylon. This is predominantly what this particular prophecy is pertinent to, right? Who is the wise man that may understand this? And who and who is he whom the mouth of Yahweh has spoken, that he may declare it? For what the uh, the land perisheth and is burnt up like a wilderness that none passeth through. And Yahweh saith, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walk therein. So he's identifying by the Spirit of the Most High, the issues with our people, what we're doing wrong, the reason this hell is coming. But what is he still doing? Going back to verse 1, crying for it. He's crying to see what's happened to us, but we're identifying the root cause of the problem of well, how is this allowed to happen to us? Why is this curse come upon us? Not causeless, but because, again, I'm going to read uh, verse 13. Or 12 rather Who is the wise man that may understand this And who is to he to whom the mouth of Yahweh has spoken That he may declare it for uh, No, so like at 13 And Yahweh saith Because they have forsaken my law Which I set before them And have not obeyed my voice Neither walked therein That's why this is happening to us Right But have walked after the imagination of their own heart And after Balaam Which is, which is idols Right which their fathers taught them. In, in this modern day time, Balaam, uh, a, a chief example of Balaam is Caesar Bosia, right? Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, Tazabah, Aliyah, Yashirala, or the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood and give them water of God to drink. I want y'all to put a pin in that. Again, it says, He. I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood and give them the water of God to drink. Put a pin in that verse 15. We will come back to that through the Spirit. Most I want to. Right? Uh, Michael, what's that? Michael Nakovi, the water. Right? Um, I will scatter them also among the heathen whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. Right? That's happened then, it's also happening now. Thus saith Yahweh Tazabah, consider ye and call for the mourning women that they may come and send for cunning women that they may come. He said, send, bring me the women that's crying and let them make haste and take up a wailing for us that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with water. So he's reiterating it. Yes, all this is happening because we're wicked as hell, but I'm still crying about it. It still hurts me. I still don't want to see this. I still have compassion and care about my people, right? For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land because our dwellings have cast us out. Remember when we were going into the land? Yahweh said what? Do not do as the people who you're getting out of this land, which are the Canaanites, or else this land will spew you out the same way it spewed them out. One second. Yeah, the land is cast us out, okay. Yet hear the word of Yahweh, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth, and teach your daughters wailing every one of her neighbor lamentation. For death is come up into our windows, and entered into our palaces, and cut off the children from without, and the young men from the streets. Death is all around our people. That's true right now today. 
Speak, thus saith Yahweh, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field, and as the handful after the harvest man, and none shall gather them. Thus saith Yahweh, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorifieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, and that I am Yahweh, which exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith Yahweh. So that's the only thing really the glory in, that you know the word of the Most High, right? But don't get too puffed up in that too, because that's another issue brothers have, and that leads to the same behavior that we're talking about tonight, or this morning's life, right? Verse 25, Behold, the days come, save Yahweh, that I will punish all them that which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. I mean, he's going to do us just like he do the nations. He's going to judge us right as he's also judging the nations this goes back to really babylon conquesting jerusalem during that time as well as conquesting and, and, and uh conquering and going to war with some of the other nations that are around about egypt and judah and edom and the children of ammon and moab and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of israel are unhurt, uncircumcised in their heart so he said we acting just like the heathen this is a good precept to prove who the Gentiles in the New Testament are, proving how we act and just like the heathen are we being called uncircumcised. It says again, and the house of Israel are uncircumcised in their heart. See that? So, that's that. But I, I, like I said, I wanted to go back to verse 15 real quick and I, I kind of want to spin off into something else. So watch this verse 15. We're going to read that again. And it reads, Therefore, thus saith Yahweh Tazabah, Aliyah Yasharala, or again, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood and give them water of gall to drink. So he said, You will feed us with wormwood. Interesting. Interesting choice of words. We're being fed with wormwood. Let's go to Jeremiah's next book, which is called the Book of Lamentations. Right? He's going to feed us with wormwood. Lamentations 3. And I'm going to start at 1. And it says, I am the man that have seen the affliction by the rod of his wrath, right? You've seen the punishments of Yahweh. He have led he have led me and brought me into drink bitterness, but not the light. Or so like he have led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light, right? Surely against me is he turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day, meaning we just live in the judgments of the Lord. My flesh and my skin hath he made old, he hath broken my bones. He hath builded against me and compassed me with gall and travail. He hath set me in the dark places as they that be dead of old. He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. This is a key verse right here in verse 7. He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. That's the situation we in now we feel like we are trapped our people we're heads about that we can't escape oppression we can't escape this hell no matter where we go in the world this curse is following us again he have edged me about that i cannot get out go anywhere in the world you want that curse is going to be present because you hedged about that you cannot get out the only thing that's going to stop you from being cursed is collectively israel coming back and following the most high Acknowledge and have faith in Hamashiach Yahweh If you're not doing that, if we're not doing it collectively, if a large enough percentage of us is not doing it to where it's adequate unto the Most High, the curse is going to follow you. He have hedged me about that I cannot get out. He have made my chain heavy. Now, I want to go to this precept on this. Because uh, Brother Saul never been asking certain different Israelites in regards about this particular scripture, and that's the precept to show you what that scripture is talking about. It's not talking about Satan and things like that, so I'm going to read it though. Jude, Jude 1 and 6, and it reads, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, have reserved in everlasting, uh, in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day again and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto, unto the judgment of the great day 
Who are those angels? People think it's fallen angels, it's Satan, etc. It ain't none of that. Again, let's read it again. Pay attention to this phraseology in the spirit. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, left it where they live, he had preserved in everlasting chains, they're in a chain under darkness until unto the judgment of the great day. Remember, they're reserved under darkness in chains. Back to Lamentations 3 and 7. He have heads me about that I cannot get out. He have made my chain heavy. So when we went into, this is Jeremiah crying about the Babylonian captivity. When we went into captivity, the chain is made heavy. That's the everlasting chain. Now watch this. Verse 2. He have led me and brought me into darkness. We said we will be under darkness in a heavy chain. This is how it was saying in Lamentations. So it just means we're going to be in captivity. That's all it means. Not something mystical, uh, a Satan chained up in the damn earth's core some damn way. All right? That's madness. We're continuing on from verse 7. We're continuing with verse 8. Also, when I cry and shout, he shutteth up out my prayer. We know why that is. He did turn his ear from hearing the law. Even his prayers become an abomination. So this is why. He hath enclosed my ways with human stone. He hath made my paths crooked. He was unto me as a bear lying in wait and as a lion in secret places. He hath turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces. He hath made me desolate. He hath bent his bow and set me as a mark for an arrow. He hath caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins. I was a derision to all my people and their song all the day. He hath filled me with the bitterness. He hath made me drunken with wormwood. There's that wormwood again. There it is. Worm. He hath made me drunken with wormwood. I want to look up this word wormwood in the Hebrew. I believe it's age 39, 39. Okay, so it's this word, which is la'ina in the Hebrew, la'ina, la'ina. And it means wormwood, bitterness, um, supposed to mean a curse. So that's what the wormwood is, that we're drinking a curse, all right? Keep that in mind. Let's go to, let's hold Lamentation. Let's go to Revelations 8 and 4. All right. <clears throat> it's Revelations 8 and 4. And it reads. And the smoke of the incense is eight. It's a lot. Of you. Am I tripping? No, eight and eleven. My fault. Not eight and four. Uh, Revelation eight and eleven. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Right. So it says the third part of the waters were made Wormwood. And because of the water being made Wormwood, brothers or men died. Right? What is that talking about? This wormwood. Well, we're seeing wormwood in reference to two different times. Well, not even two different times, but two different references to a captivity that we were under as wormwood. And that's one of the uh, the uh, the the trumpets in Revelation. Right? So again, it says that the wormwood came on the water, and we drank the water, and it killed. Right? So let's get the precept on that real quick in the Book of Isaiah. So we see we went into the Hebraic concept of wormwood, really meaning a curse, bitterness, etc. So let's get the final precept that's going to bring it all full circle. Took you from Jeremiah to Lamentation to Revelation. Now we go into the prophet Isaiah, right? Showing in the spirit how to do this by some of Mashiach Yahushai. So this is Isaiah 30 and 20. And it reads, And though Yahweh give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, ye shall not uh, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore but thine eyes shall see thy teachers but key again 
And though Yahweh gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Who is that? Uh, Jalen Howard, Yahweh Shemiel Sharp, right the water. So the, the water turning to wormwood and it killing people is the water of affliction. It's the water of the curse. Basically us being cursed, us going into slavery. That's all it's talking about. See what I'm saying? But see, they try to mystify it. Oh, Wormwood, it's going to be a meteor called Wormwood is going to crash down. They mystify it. Oh, everlasting chains under darkness. Oh, that Satan and the fallen angels is under the earth in chains. No. That's metaphysically referred to the oppression and the captivity that Israel goes under. It says that we be in darkness and chains. But if you're not going precept upon precept, dealing with this whole Bible, and number one, if you're not in the spirit of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, one of the key things to understand this Bible is being in Yahweh Shai. Because the, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So to truly understand prophecy, the Most High is only opening up the true understanding of prophecy to brothers who are in Yahweh Shai, who acknowledge his son, Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Christ, as the king and as the Messiah of Israel, as the one that was sacrificed for Israel, as the advocate in the Shemayim, in the heavens, for Israel. That's who he's opening up true understanding of these prophecies to. All right? But let me go back to Lamentation 3. It's a lot. What I leave off at? <clears throat> One more, right? What is that, 15? Yeah, okay, it's picking back up in Lamentations 3 and 16. And it reads, he, he have also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He have covered me with ashes. And thou hast removed my soul far from peace. What does that mean he removed us far from peace in this instance? Number one is talking about Jerusalem. Yerushalayim, which means what? The city of peace. Symb symbolically, it means we're not at peace. We're going through hell. Right? You have removed me, my soul rather, far from peace. I forgot prosperity. We ain't known prosperity outside of our land. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from Yahweh. Remembering my affliction and my misery and wormwood in the gall. Remembering what the, all the hell that we're going through. My soul have been still in remembrance and is humbled in me. That's what we're supposed to do now in this hell hole. And that's what brothers and sisters is waking up to this truth is doing. Remember what we're going through and being humble. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. Now where is the hope in that humility? It's going to elaborate. It is of Yahweh's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fell of not. And that is, brings this whole lesson full circle. It's about compassion. Even through all the hell Yahweh will put on us for our disobedience, he still has compassion. And he still has not obliterated and exterminated our people. So that's compassion. They are new every morning. Uh, great is thy faithfulness. Yahweh is my portion, save my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. That's our only hope. And he's put us in this position because we lost sight of the fact that he's our only hope. So he's put us in this position to force us to see that there is no hope but in him. And he has set up a vessel to bring us that hope in his son Hamashiach, Yahweh. Yahweh is good unto them that wait for him to the to to the soul that seek that seeketh him it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of your house so people can make fun of us and things of that nature but again it says it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of your house that's what we supposed to, it's good to do that so if somebody have a problem with it that's fine to hell with what they're talking about one more time i'm gonna, I'm gonna End off on this. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of Yahweh. And that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. So yeah, now I'll uh, I'll deal with the chat for a minute before I close it up. Why well, try to take another nap before I gotta uh get up out of here.
whole month is out. Okay, you just got on your flight. Y'all watching me out shop rock and thought, man. See you soon, most high willing. You'll see what I think of Ron Dalton Jr. soon enough. Come to Atlanta, DeAndre Stephens. CNN Center every Saturday afternoon. If you're in Macon. I'm flying back to Atlanta tonight. Most I will. Call all y'all watching me outside. I see that knock one. I said it, DeAndre at CNN Center. No, I ain't been to DC. I don't have any plans to go to DC as of now. <clears throat> All praises, Jason. We got a couple of bros in Ohio, but I'm be honest with you, I damn sure don't plan on going to Ohio. That's a running joke about a few states that I just do not intend on traveling to. Ohio is one of them. I don't know, man. This week, probably. You just got to wait on Sonetta, so it's going to be on his channel. Either Black News 102 or Sonetta Studios. Yeah, I ain't going to lie, man. We, we were supposed to go to Coney Island on a Saturday, but we had an event uh, I had to do with my wife. So we, we, um, we just went to downtown Brooklyn. But ever since the very first time I came to New York, Chief Ephraim took myself and, and Captain Tazama, he, he took us out to um, to Coney Island, man. I always said I want to do the work out there, man, so bad. Nice, he got game war slash the Warriors camp. Hold on, I'm going to. Yeah, man, I, I answered that. Y'all will find out about Ron Dalton Jr. soon enough about what I think about him. It's impossible to establish it. W once we manifest the kingdom, it will trigger the return of Yahweh Shai. So really, it's it's all about the elect waking up according to when Yahweh ordains them to wake up. That's the key. Um... Yeah, see, see, this was a. At the world famous, he got game. That was the first time we went. So this was had to be uh, 2016, September of 2016. Always wanted to do the work there ever since then. Just never had a chance. Uh, unfortunately, so again, we we're supposed to go this past Saturday, but we just ain't end up going. Look. Took that. We did a couple videos, but like we wasn't no camp. It was late. Nobody was out there. Yeah, right there. That's my joint. Old One West Twelve Tribe sign. My favorite to all tribes on all time. We have videos about the scattered Israelites in Africa, but there'll be more. I'm getting ready to do the Israelites that scattered around the world series. Most I want to very soon, like we did Viva Yasharala. Most I will. All praises to JTEX. Can we elect on our camp elders to the top? No, you can't do that. I mean, we're we're all Christ or Mashiach in our own right. We're all anointed in our own right, but we're not the God. We're not the only begotten of Yahweh. So there's nothing we can do to make ourselves that. We have to 
be righteous and teach righteousness and Israel have to be righteous collectively and that will trigger the proverbial sky to crack and Hamashiach Yahweh shall to come I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck with you brother I ain't coming to Australia I'm not sent to Australia for the Israelites in Australia the Lord will raise prophets up I'm sent to blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans in the Americas. That's who I'm sent to, predominantly. I'm just being real. And there's a purpose for that. Now, are the Israelites elsewhere? Scattered in all four corners. The Most High raises up prophets for the express purpose of waking them up. See what I'm saying? So, I'm not of the school of thought that the Australian Aboriginal was the tribe of Reuben. Or any tribe of Israel, to be honest with you. I'm not out of that school of thought. But, you know, most high gonna raise prophets up in the four corners. Why? Where are my mods at? Why why does Gandalf exist in my chat room? I would love to understand where my mind is at right now. That's incredible. This dude is a troll. His, his name on there is AKA the Stream Killer. His whole point of life is to come and troll live streams. Heist, are you talking to me? If you want in, in NorCal, 16th and Mission in San Francisco every Saturday afternoon. Okay, Heist. You all good. All praises. Of course, Colin Kaepernick is in his life. I can't guarantee you a conversation with me, brother. Carver conversations with me are a little hard to come by. But you can email us and somebody will get back to you. Well, most of Maz was on, on was in, at camp, so I understand that. Yeah, Hawaiian Samoans is not Zebulon and not any of the tribes of Israel. Hawaiians and Samoans are heathens. Yes, they're going to be. All, all, all Israel is going to be in the kingdom, brother. All, every Israelite. Wicked or righteous. I will reach out. Masharai Yasharallah has various counseling services. The Star of David does not look like a pentagram. A pentagram has five points. That's where the term penta comes from. But I'm going to hip you to something as well. What they call a pentagram is also found in antiquity in Israel as the Jerusalem seal. It's just not the inverted pentagram, which is the upside down one, which is the head of the goat, which they use. No, Shalom and Shalom mean the same thing. Mean peace. The same way Barak and Barawak mean the same thing. Bless. There is no Atlanta trip. I live in Atlanta. So I don't take trips to Atlanta no more. I stay there. To deal with lust, you have to fast. You have to afflict your flesh to deal with lust issues. And of course, pray the most high, principally, and afflict your flesh. Withhold yourselves, or hold yourself from things that you want, be it food, drink, 
women, things of that nature, things that your lust, you things that your flesh takes pleasure in, withhold yourself from it. And that resistance will build up spiritual strength and allow your spirit to transcend your flesh. To possess your vessel as your how would have you. That's my best advice. None of that is, there's no such thing as fallen angels. Some of us are twice a year. We had one in January in Atlanta. We had one last week in Chicago. So twice a year. Yes, the Pacific Islanders, the Austronesian, Micronesian, and Polynesian people, you say Baba Kusha, that's pleasing Hebrew. The Austronesian, Micronesian, Melanesian, and Polynesian people are not Israelites, by and large. What are you talking about, D Walk? More than seven days. That's how you grieve in the Bible. Shout out to you out there in Coachella. The Maroons? Of course, the Maroons are Israelites. Yes, the Eskimos are Israelites. They're more properly called the Inuit or the Alaskan natives. Who came into the daughter of men? The sons of God. We are the sons of God. Did Christ not say everyone that uh, come into me have the power to become a son, a, 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 the son of God? We are the sons of God. This is how we know. Of course, I heard the Freemasons. This is how we know we're the sons of God if we love one another. So the chosen people had sex with daughters of people who were not chosen. What are examples of this? Blake Griffin. Myself. Yeah, I wish I certainly walked on the sea. Yes, the Maroons are Israelites. In specific, of the tribe of Levi. Levites in Suriname and Jamaica that live on the outskirts, etc. Those Maroons, French Guyana, those are Levites. All praises. All through the spirit and power of your house, by Shimmy Alvashai. The Australian Aboriginal is the Astronesian, so I've already covered them. They're not Israelites. So the men the Bible referred to is no, it's. Chosen men sleeping with non-chosen people. It would be around that time, Shalom. It would be around that time. It could even be a little later. Oh, emphatically, the Yaki are Israelites from Sonora. I know people from Sonora. The Canaanite woman in one account and the Greek woman in the other account. Why is that? It was very simple. There's a gospel according to Mark. There's a gospel according to Matthew. There's a gospel according to Luke. There's a gospel according to John. It's four different people telling a story, right? Get any four different people together and have them tell a story 
and there are going to be minuscule details that are different and sometimes in the instance of that there's only two accounts of it we have to understand that there's only two eyewitness gospels this is matthew and john mark and luke are not eyewitnesses mark and luke are basing their gospels off of what they gather from multiple people mark predominantly peter luke various people who were eyewitnesses so this is why you have variants in accounts there's certainly a human element in the bible that brothers who get too dogmatic don't factor in but if you don't factor it in you one either gonna look stupid or you two gonna get your face shaken over something that your face shouldn't be shaken about simply because you're being impractical about how the bible came into existence The point is that the moral of the story and what we're supposed to get out of it is clear and it's right there. What It's not important whether the woman is a Seraphonician or a Canaanite. You know why? Because a Seraphonician is a Canaanite. It's just another way to say it. Seraphonician means the merge between the Syrians and the Phoenicians that began to happen or began to be reckoned after the time of the Greeks and the Romans. Phoenicians are what? Canaanites. So when it says a Canaanite woman, it says a Seraphonician woman, it's not even actually saying anything different. It's just using different phraseology. And that's influenced by the political terminology that's used by the writer that the writer is familiar with. One I witnessed it, one didn't, one saw it later in time. So phraseology is different. Like now, for example, people say Chicago was founded by a Haitian. Du Sable, right? But when he came to Chicago, there was no such thing as Haiti. It wasn't called Haiti at that time. Technically, it was because that's the ancient name of it that the indigenous people called it. But it was reckoned as uh, St. Domingue, right? But later now, it's called Haiti, so they call him a Haitian. But during that time, he wasn't called a Haitian. He was called somebody from St. Domingue. See what I'm saying? That's how it works. So the Hebrew, the brother who's more familiar with Hebraic thought, says it's a Canaanite. The brother who is more familiar with Greco-Roman political terms calls her a Seraphonician. That's why that happens right there, brother. Not a big deal. Hello, yeah. I keep hearing about it. I keep hearing about Kirk Franklin getting d daggered by a devil. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I don't even care to watch it. That's crazy. Yeah, let me just say that. Cause for some reason, I just thought in my head, I don't even care. Um, no, we don't have no video breakdown on Tyler. About 30 days in a month. About 30. Did the prophet Ezekiel chapter 37 have anything with you moving to ATL? The Valley of Dry Bones is everywhere. It's not just in Atlanta. So no, that's not what brought me to Atlanta. What brought me to Atlanta is the significant, how significantly lower the cost of living is in compared to California where I previously lived, brother. That's the driving factor to get me to Atlanta, if you must know. $1,400 to get you a studio apartment in San Diego. $1,400 to get you a four-bedroom house in Atlanta. Which do I take? No, Donald Trump is not one of the Trumpets in the book of Revelation. 
He can play into one of them, possibly, but we'll see. You think it's too many people in Atlanta? Your ass ain't been to California, brother. And you damn sure ain't been to New York, where I'm at right now. It's too many people in New York and California. Atlanta has no people compared to those areas. Let's look at Atlanta Metro real quick. Yeah, and then North Carolina is cheaper, but I'm not moving to North Carolina. There's not nothing in North Carolina. You gotta understand, cost of living is a huge factor to me, but also what's going on, like what there is to do, is also a huge factor to me as well. Wasn't no way I'm gonna go someplace that's not a major city. That, that'd be just a waste of my ability, to be honest with you. Atlanta is a place where I could spiritually flourish and utilize my spiritual gifts and abilities on, on a high level because of all the things that are going on in Atlanta. All the people that are in Atlanta. The types of people that are in Atlanta. Look at Atlanta Metro. Okay, so Atlanta don't even have half a million but Atlanta Metro got a little under six million New York City met New York City Metro was 14 million that's over twice as much LA Metro got to be about 10 million let me see LA Metro. Yeah, 13 million. So, yeah, over twice as much people in New York and California. And New York Rose is jacked up, but the traffic in Dallas is worse than California or New York. Take this from me, I lived in Dallas for a year before I moved to Atlanta. So I would say that Dallas got the worst traffic in the country. But New York got the worst roads more than in this country. I'll say that now. All praise you. How about Shimmy? I was shot. Yeah, I mean, it's up for beginning of sorrows, etc. I'm going to tell you what it is. Certainly Taco City, brother. Atlanta, Georgia. It was a collective creation of humanity. During a time where you have something called Pangea came. So, the, the continents that we know now did not exist in the, in the way that we know them now. I'll be back and forth. I don't know when, though. Most how well I'll be back and forth. Because <laughs> I could. I would live in Florida, but Florida's expensive, too. That's the only other place I move after Atlanta. That's the only other place I consider moving, honestly, is Florida. I love the vibe in Florida. I, I just feel... I feel at home in Florida. It's mostly because Levi is so heavy. Just like in Brooklyn, like I feel at home in Brooklyn because Levi is so heavy. But um, Dallas was cool. There's some things I really like about Dallas and there's some things I really don't like about Dallas. And the things I really don't like about Dallas outweigh the things I like about it. Well, it depends on what Hispanic. Mexicans are Issachar, Puerto Ricans are Ephraim. Cubans are Manessa, Dominicans are uh, Simeon, Central Americans are Zebulon. So, this has been, I've been just, when, when Levi's been a, a Haitian heat wave weekend out here for me, other than when we went to Sunset Park and we was around Northern King, other than that, Levi everywhere, bro. Yes, the chariots of the Most High, Midi.
feel me? But Florida's just a little too expensive, so. And hurricanes, those two factors will probably keep me from moving to Florida. But, um, you know, Atlanta is cool. I like it. By the grace of the Most High, we in the building. It's a hub city too, so if I need to do any traveling, flights are relatively inexpensive um, compared to other cities like San Diego that's not a hub city. So, um, you know, Dallas was a hub city too, though. No, we ain't got no building in Atlanta yet. I'm not testifying against my child. Yeah, we we got brothers in Tampa. Powerful soldier to wash, brother Kwame Allah. They out there in Tampa. How often do I fly too often? I can't wait to get back to Atlanta and not travel for a while. And I've been on, I flew from, in the last week, I've been on four airplanes. And whenever the world start pick it up. What are you say? We fall on the lunar Sabbath, you see what I'm saying? I ain't see that. No, we don't have a building in Atlanta. We have a camp there for the CNN Center. Every uh, every week, I'm gonna make clothes. I'm gonna try to take a nap before I gotta check up out of here. My flight's later with that. I'm gonna give all praise, honor, and glory to you. How will I show me? I will shine, say shalom.